Hello, um, hello everybody. Good morning from Brussels. My name is Jacques Creter. I am the head of the ICU department in Erasmus University Hospital in Brussels, Belgium. And I'm really very pleased to moderate this uh, live hot topic session during this 2020 e Easy Camp. The question that will be addressed during this session is, should the elderly take aspirin to prevent sepsis? To answer to this question, our speaker, Professor Damon Eisen, will present the results of the large uh, antisepsis trial. Those results have been published this morning in, in The Lancet. Professor Damon Eisen is an academic Australian infectious disease physician with research interest of clinical trial, adjuvant therapies for biofilm, and big health data. Is working in the uh, James Cook University and Monash Universities in uh, Australia. So, Professor Ezen, uh, really thank you for sharing with us for the first time the results of the antisepsis uh, trial. And so, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you very much, Jacques. Can I just check one more time that you can see and hear me? Jacques, can you hear me okay? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, look, I'm sorry, very good. Uh, well, thank you to Jacques, uh, but uh, obviously a very large uh, thank you to uh, Jean-Louis Vincent, who uh, invited me to partake of the, participate in the conference. And uh, with this presentation of our aspirin to inhibit sepsis trial, uh, I can answer very briefly, no, uh, the elderly should not take aspirin in the hope that it will improve sepsis outcomes. So the antisepsis trial is a sub-study of Aspirin, uh, aspirin in reducing events in the elderly, a large community-based primary prevention trial in the healthy elderly. Now, uh, I have no disclosures aside from the fact that I reside in the most livable city in the world. That's my neighbourhood there, bottom right, at 6am uh, this morning, my time. So, salicylates so are integral to plants' defences against microbial and insect attack in that they mediate the systemic acquired response. Now, so therefore, it's no surprise that uh, salicylic acid is found in the bark of the willow tree, and the Ebers papyrus tells us that this was, or is the first mention of the use of uh, an extract of willow bark by the ancients for treatment of uh, pain and fever. So aspirin uh, has one of the longest histories of human, or sorry, salicylic acid has one of the longest histories of human use, but it was not until Felix Hoffmann, a uh, industrial chemist uh, working in 1897 for Bayer, uh, who added an acetyl group to salicylic acid, making this chemical uh, non-irritant to the gastrointestinal tract and uh, contributing to Bayer's huge fortune, but also to the happiness of his father, who previously was not able to tolerate salicylic acid. So there had been intense interest in uh, potential role of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs uh, in sepsis outcomes. Through the 1970s, there were um, many studies of in vitro and animal effects, benefits of particularly ibuprofen. And this led George Bernard and his group to undertake a phase three randomized controlled trial that they reported in the New England Journal in 1997. Uh, they set out to show a large 35% reduction in uh, sepsis deaths, so intended to enrol 535 patients, but an interim analysis of the outcomes of 455 patients led to the cessation of the trial on the basis of futility. At the time of that interim analysis, 
a 3% reduction in death had been demonstrated, but this was not significant. Uh, and uh, after that time, uh, Dr. Bernard and others went on to study recombinant uh, human-activated protein C. So the cyclooxygenase inhibition uh, theory for sepsis was discounted. But that's not the end of the story with aspirin and a potential reduction in sepsis mortality. And I became involved, our group became involved in this area uh, from 2010 onwards. And we first studied an observational cohort of patients admitted to sepsis, to intensive care with sepsis, uh, and those patients who had been taking aspirin long term. And here we've been able to collect and publish in 2017 all the available literature in this area up until that time and performed a study level meta-analysis using individual patient data, some of which may have been contributed uh, by um, uh, those of you in the audience, and if so, I'm grateful uh, for your participation in this study. So this uh, forest plot of the meta-analysis shows that, indeed, observational cohort data did show a reduction in uh, sepsis mortality with a, an effect size of 7%, which was um, significant. But how could low-dose aspirin, in fact, improve um, sepsis and, and reduce sepsis deaths? Well, we understand its um, role in inhibition of cyclooxygenase, but there are a number of other less appreciated uh, potential um, benefits. So firstly, aspirin uh, can uh, inhibit I-kappa-B and uh, stabilize the NF-kappa-B uh, complex in the cytoplasm and therefore inhibit uh, secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Um, aspirin, in fact, has less potent actions in this regard than non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Secondly, though, um, through a pathway that be, may be less familiar to you, aspirin is able to increase the levels of a group of lipoid modulators of uh, inflammatory uh, processes. These are chemicals that were described by Charles Surhan in, in uh, Harvard and include lipoxins, resolvins, and morescins. And the, um, the um, metabolic pathway that I have illustrated there on the right is an example of how aspirin can recapitulate the um, standard uh, or routine production of lipoxins and um, so aspirin can uh, produce um, aspirin-triggered lipoxin, shown there on the left. And this molecule uh, shares with the uh, native lipoxin the ability to influence both cellular and biochemical processes, which are, are central to uh, the inflammatory cascade. And they're listed uh, there across the bottom of the slide. And lastly, um, aspirin uh, has uh, well-recognized effects not only in inhibition of activated platelets, but uh, activity against other uh, cellular effector mechanisms uh, of the innate uh, immune system. Uh, I'm not certain that I understand um, whether this balance of effect of aspirin would be positive or negative. Maybe somebody in the audience uh, does uh, understand that better than I. So we were able then to proceed to address this research question um, through the antisepsis study. Does long-term low-dose aspirin improve sepsis outcomes in the healthy elderly? And just uh, please recall that this is a sub-study of the parent ASPRI uh, trial, randomized control trial, and we were able to investigate uh, new endpoints that were not included in the ASPRI trial. Uh, these endpoints 
were the primary uh, endpoint death contributed to by sepsis, secondary endpoints both hospitalisation and ICU admission contributed to by sepsis. The case definition of sepsis that was used in antisepsis was the consensus SERS-based definition that was um, prevalent, that was the uh, prevailing definition at the time the study antisepsis commenced in 2013 and uh, when it was designed through 2012. Um, potential sepsis endpoints were, first of all, identified um, through uh, recording of, of hospitalizations, um, through uh, scrutiny of general practitioner records, and through regular um, participant interviews. And so we, the adjudication panel, were able to independently assess these study documents consisting of uh, hospital records or in uh, antisepsis participants who died out of hospitals to determine whether um, these uh, endpoints indeed, sorry, these uh, uh, sepsis events did indeed meet the study endpoints. And the panel was made up of four infectious diseases and one intensive care physician. Antisepsis was powered using the following assumptions to um, detect a reduction of uh, sepsis mortality. The effect size is shown there, and that was, again, derived from the available literature in uh, 2012, the, um, um, the observational cohort data, including those of our own group. And in fact, that effect size was a uh, conservative one. The numbers of anticipated deaths in the study population were derived from Australian census information and also relied on the information that among 70 plus year olds in Australia, 20% of deaths were due to or contributed to by sepsis. So we anticipated that 270 sepsis deaths could be uh, studied in antisepsis. The population uh, consisted of 16,703 healthy 70 plus year old Australians who, had, um, who were participating in the ASPRI trial. They were randomized sorry, recruited between March of 2010 and December of 2014, and then randomised to the intervention of 100 milligrams of aspirin daily, low dose, or, um, or uh, matching uh, placebo. They were followed, the study participants were followed through to the period of June 2017, at which point the ESPRI intervention ceased. This flow chart lays out the um, antisepsis participants. So over 20,000 individuals were assessed for eligibility, exclusions uh, listed there. And as I've mentioned, 16,703 participants were randomized equally to as or matching placebo. Small numbers of um, those uh, randomised were lost to follow-up or withdrew consent, but all randomised um, participants were included in the intention to treat analysis. The baseline characteristics of uh, antisepsis uh, study participants are shown here. They were predominantly over the age of 74, uh, predominantly women, almost universally white, uh, slender, had low um, rates of uh, adverse lifestyle um, lifestyle choices, uh, low uh, prevalence of diabetes, and uh, but a considerable number of them, 20% in each arm, um, had a baseline history of cancer. 
um, the median uh, time in study was 4.6 for both groups. Uh, in total, 1,616 sepsis endpoints were adjudicated, of which 203 were deaths, the primary endpoint, and uh, 413 secondary endpoints hospitalisation. Predominantly, uh, the site of sepsis was pneumonia, urinary tract infection, bacteremia, peritonitis, with the main pathogens identified listed there. But as expected, given that the majority of uh, sepsis was due to pneumonia and the case definition was, again, the consensus clinically based um, definition that did not require identification of a pathogen. Um, a large majority of sepsis cases did not have a pathogen identified. Here is a table that outlines uh, the endpoints. Uh, so the primary endpoint, death, contributed to by sepsis. Whilst there was no significant difference, there was an 8% increase in uh, participants who were um, taking low-dose aspirin. <clears throat> Similarly, among uh, secondary endpoint events, hospitalizations numbering uh, 413, no significant difference, but an 18% non-significant uh, trend. I know that will cause uh, editors in the audience to wince but a trend to harm with aspirin use. Among 61 patients submitted to ICU, there was no significant uh, difference among those on aspirin or on placebo. Here are the survival curves uh, for the primary endpoint death contributed to by sepsis with uh, study participants over the six years of uh, antisepsis. And again, the um, univariate uh, Cox proportional uh, hazards uh, ratio uh, analysis there, the results uh, which I've shown on the previous slide. Here's the same analysis of the secondary endpoint of hospitalizations. Again, no significant difference. And the same for ICU admissions. Uh, a regression analysis was also uh, performed uh, as part of the um, pre-described uh, uh, statistical um, approach. And after adjustment for age, diabetes, and the baseline history of cancer, uh, along with um, smoking or alcohol, there was again no change to the measured hazard ratio that I've already uh, demonstrated for you. So what have we shown um, and why have we shown it? Is it indeed, was it indeed that this study was underpowered? Now, I'm using uh, this figure, which um, demonstrates a Bayesian inference analysis of the prior uh, odds ratio estimates shown in the lower blue curve with odds of death um, associated with sepsis um, with uh, crossing one but with a large tail up to uh, an odds ratio of 3.5. The posterior odds which are derived from our study uh, demonstrated by the red line, so greater confidence in the uh, measured odds radio ratios, but they cross one and uh, they favour harm um, with uh, aspirin, long-term aspirin use. I now just want to um, just uh, reflect on the uh, results of the ASPRI trial. These were published in three back-to-back -back, um, papers in the New England Journal in 2018. And this helps put our antisepsis study in a context. So the primary endpoint of disease-free survival uh, of ASPRI, no improvement. 
with a primary prevention approach in the healthy elderly, low dose aspirin did not reduce vascular events. However, and this was unexpected, there was an increased all cause mortality. And that's demonstrated in the table at the bottom right increased all cause mortality, which was particularly due to uh, increase in cancer mortality. The ASPRI trial also reported an increase in bleeding risk. So the obvious conclusion is that um, low-dose aspirin used for primary prevention is not only harmful, but also uh, has an unacceptable risk. <clears throat> How should we then consider uh, the results of antisepsis and uh, is there any possible future for um, demonstration of a reduction in sepsis death? Well, uh, again, I'll uh, state um, we have demonstrated a trend to harm with low-dose aspirin with non-significant increase in both death and hospitalisation in the intervention group. Um, what about the characteristics of our study population? Were they too healthy? Obviously, there were no differences between the uh, intervention and placebo group, group but there was a uh, lower than expected or anticipated rate of death. Could it be that, in fact, we were uh, treating uh, or studying the wrong age group? Uh, the meta-analysis uh, that I showed you in the background was predominantly of younger patients with higher acuity during um, their stay in intensive care. Should we, therefore, perform a um, primary prevention study in the uh, in a younger population, well, that would be a, an uh, infeasible study um, given the low event rate in younger uh, people. So it would, it would uh, just be infeasible with uh, an enormous uh, population required. Could this be a, a dose effect? Is 100 milligrams of aspirin insufficient? Uh, in fact, there are data. Uh, Peter Rothwell, a stroke, stroke trialist in Oxford, and I have communicated, and he has access to the individual patient data from the large range of um, former primary prevention uh, studies. And indeed, he has seen a uh, trend to a reduction in sepsis deaths um, with aspirin, but with doses uh, around 300 milligrams or greater. Uh, and interestingly, those deaths were particularly uh, those due to, um, to influenza. But um, the conclusion is that we have shown no benefit of primary prevention using low-dose um, aspirin in the elderly with regards to reduction in uh, sepsis deaths. It remains for me then just to acknowledge uh, and thank my co-authors uh, listed there and their institutions uh, listed across uh, the bottom of the slide. And finally, once again, to uh, acknowledge and thank the funders of this study, um, particularly uh, National Institutes of Health, uh, who funded um, ASPRI. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, thank you very much for this very, very interesting uh, presentation. So, um, I have a, I have a few questions. So you you conclude clearly Good. that this is the uh, end of his story for the primary prevention of aspirin in the elderly. We have enough data yes. to say that now, um, clearly. Yes. Um, yeah. So so I'll, I'll just um, expand. Um, I I think this uh, these data are conclusive in themselves. Um, uh, I, I don't think the uh, the medical uh, 
population uh, as a whole were waiting for the answer of this study. I know there is certainly interest in the uh, the sepsis um, community, but given the uh, clear harm um, from the ASPRI trial, uh, it, um, this won't uh, uh, provide a, another indication. Do, do you think that uh, using the old definition of sepsis with with first first defined definition uh, could it be uh, let's say a, a bias? We, we know that sometimes patients in sepsis uh, do not fulfill the uh, search criteria. So, uh, can you make a comment on this? So, look, uh, of course. Um, so, um, I am going. Uh, back to the ASPRI data to now reanalyze uh, an extra 300 plus um, sepsis events um, and we'll um, uh, look for those that did not meet SERS criteria uh, and we'll use those not necessarily to update the anti-sepsis results but for, uh, for other uh, related studies. It, is not possible with the available data to make a, a diagnosis of sepsis according to sepsis three criteria. So, um, uh, Dr. Rezen, on the other hand, if we imagine that your uh, study was positive, how do you place, you know, the uh, the uh, primary mm. prevention by aspirin, knowing that it increased, you know, the uh, mortality of all cause in the ASPRI uh, yeah. trial. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's difficult. Um, I, <laughs> I don't believe that um, this would be a solo or sole uh, indication. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's interesting to reflect on data uh, such as the LIPS-A study that um, relied on a low dose aspirin for um, acute intervention at presentation to intensive care with um, uh, patients at high risk of ARDS, predominantly due to pneumonia. That did not show a reduction in, uh, in um, progression to ARDS, did not show reduction in uh, important biomarkers, IL-6 and others. So it's not possible to intervene acutely with aspirin either. No hope, unfortunately. So the, uh, I imagine uh, also that in this kind of population uh, with an age over 70 uh, years, a proportion of those patients has to take during the trial aspirin for secondary prevention of, for, for cardiovascular disease. It was the same in both groups? No. No. Was it important? Uh, uh, no. Uh, patients entering ASPRI had to uh, have no evidence of, um, uh, or no history of cardiovascular disease, or certainly no uh, history of unstable cardiovascular disease. So this was purely primary prevention. Obviously, the uh, yep. story is quite different for secondary prevention. Yeah, but during the trial, I imagine that during the four years of follow-up, some of those patients are taking the aspirin for the secondary prevention. Or, or, yeah. or none of them. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, look, that's um, quite true. And, mm. um, uh, but the aspirin a study has shown that there was no difference for prevention of, of cardiovascular events. Um, patient, there was a, a very small uh, crossover uh, from um, um, placebo to active drug um, uh, among study participants in a spree, less than 5%. And, and frequently that was short term. Um, patients who died of, of uh, cardiovascular events obviously were censored from the study. 
Okay, thank you uh, very much, Dr. Eisen. It's 11.30 in Brussels, so I think that we have to uh, finish this uh, uh, live session. So again, thank you for sharing with us the uh, results from uh, this large uh, antisepsis trial. Thank you very much for being okay. uh, here with us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Good morning. Bye.